Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Uh, Welcome back, everyone. The election is on the minds of many of us, and it's not just the presidential election. We're also talking about open enrollment elections for retirement. Um, All comes down to money now, doesn't it? She's an expert (laughs) in that area. She's the woman behind 3B Financial, our professional, financial professional of the year. Latanya Stewart is back with us. How are you doing today? I am wonderful. How are you, Steve? I am good. It's funny. I was just texting with somebody and they're on their way to vote early at this time. Um, Why don't we start there? What's your feeling in in terms of the election? are Are you seeing a lot of people holding off on making purchases, like certainly cars. I'm hearing that everywhere where everybody's having the brakes. People have been holding on to their vehicles. Uh, average is like 12 years now. Do you think after, regardless of who gets elected, and we're not doing politics here, yes. do you think that the, 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 the faucet, the financial faucet is going to open from that point and people are going to feel at least more comfortable? I think they will once they find out what the feds are going to do with interest rates. And that's the big question. So everybody is holding on tightly to their money, not making big purchases. Like you said, cars, homes, we're waiting to see who's elected and what they do. And then what the feds do with the interest rates, because that's going to drive how people decide, are they going to spend money where they're going to spend it and how much are they going to be willing to spend? Yeah. You know, it's interesting if you go back a year or so ago, many were saying with the interest rates, you know, if you're looking to buy a house, just have the brakes. I'm telling you the spring of 24, it's going to change. It's going to start dropping. Nothing really has changed. It's kind of in the same, you know, a little point here, a point there, but we're, we're, we really haven't made any changes. The only difference is I'm seeing housing prices going higher and higher because there's less inventory. So many are getting, Fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars at least above their their asking price. Do you see the you see the interest rates within mortgages uh, potentially dropping soon? Well, it is hopefully in the beginning of the year once we have a new president elect in the White House, seeing what they're going to do. But one of the things, like here in the Bay Area where I'm at, housing prices are going up, but people are stopping because they don't have the funds to come in and do the homes that require the remodels. Mm. Like the homes that are move-in ready, they're moving in certain areas, but others where you need that fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars $75,000 to make a couple of upgrades, people aren't buying those homes because they don't have the assets and the resources to do that. Yeah. And that just, add that on top of the the asking price, the listing price, and and also the, the, the pain and suffering of going through that. You know, you <laughs> know, not that you want it perfect to move in, but to minimize that. Um, plus, it's it just looks like people are, are just waiting and then renting. But then that's a whole other situation. The price of rentals now. Um, They're going up. Yeah. And price fixing. That's what I'm hearing, too, when it comes to yeah. rentals. Mm. Uh, what's your biggest concern financially when you look at things in a global view? you know, the United States or the world, what, what concerns you as somebody that deals in the financial area? Where are we going to land? Prices are going up. Yet again, grocery stores, there's still oh. shortages. It reminds yeah. me of when we were in COVID. I was in um, a store recently. I'm a brown egg person. There were like no eggs. And I'm like, they're eggs. But then a carton of eggs was like almost $7. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Mm. You know, the, our basic needs toilet paper, just your basic household needs. I know here in San Francisco, they're trying to pass a bill to where grocery stores have to give a six month notice before they close. Because we're closing major stores in major areas. Like example, here in Oakland, we have now lost all of our sporting teams. The A's are now going up to Sacramento. Mm. So you're taking that city income and now you're sending it somewhere else where you're also taking away jobs. Wow. Mm. Uh, be fully transparent. I was in Oakland back in March. And mm-hmm. even at that time, they were closing fast food restaurants. I was like, what? What? And now yeah. the hotel that I stayed at in Oakland is closed. The Hilton. The Hilton. Like- <laughs> yes. What? 
<laughs> I could not believe it. Hilton is closed. That was a major airport or a hotel right outside the Oakland airport. Yes. In and out. Oakland has the first and only in and out that has ever been closed in their history of being a franchise. I did not know that. And yes, it, it, I knew it was the in and out because I I actually walked from the Hilton to the in and out. Uh, okay. Because I've never been to one. So I was like, you know, let's go check that out. Um just it's it, unbelievable. Then you look at uh, so many different companies with uh, bankruptcy, you know, big ones. TGI Fridays. I heard, uh, you know, I'm in the Northeast. They're closing a whole bunch of them. Uh, I guess they're underperforming. What back to back to grocery prices? Yeah, they've been high for a long time. I went into an Amazon Fresh that just opened up in my area. First one for hundreds of miles. And I expected to walk in there and I went with my friend. He was off that day. I'm like, yeah, bro, let's go. We're going to save a lot of money. Shocked how there was no savings. What's <laughs> nothing. I, 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 I thought they, they were actually more expensive than other grocery stores in the area. Mm-hmm. And like we're getting ready for the Black Friday sales. Now you're, I'm starting to see some of those coming out, the emails. Mm. And my question is, are you really saving and what are you saving? Right. Yep. It's like, okay, the TV, which most Americans have two or three televisions in their home. Why do I need a new 70 inch TV for $700, whatever it is, that's normally $1,000. The reality is, no, you're not saving $300. You're buying it for the price that it is. And I think that's a misconception we see. It's like, oh, it's on sale. No, that's what you're purchasing that item for at that moment. But when you hear these huge discounts, we think we're saving hundreds of dollars and we're really not. You're purchasing at that purchase price. And I think that's where consumers get caught up. It's like, I'm saving so much money because I'm waiting. Depending on the item, maybe no cars, I could see that. But some of your basic needs, no, that's the price you're paying today for that item because they know they can get you in there to purchase it. So the company is actually making more money because more consumers are buying those items than if they were at regular price. I never thought of it that way. And while you're waiting, the seller is waiting because they know they're going to get you eventually. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. The only, you know, Amazon prime day, I've, I've seen some decent deals. It is like, you know, chum in the water with the sharks, you know, they, they know that, They'll give you a couple of sale prices that look very attractive. And then you're just like, oh, let me get this. Slop. Let me get that. Let me get that. Um, yeah, to your point, it's not all sales. Uh, we got to be mindful of, of what we're spending our money on. And I think you and I have talked to this before. Want versus need. Mm. Amazon is giving you these great prices. It's like, I want that. I want that. I want that. I want that. Well, look at how much more money you spent because it was on sale versus if it was any other regular day for you. And then most of us are... To your point, like the Amazons, they're, they're wants. They're not honestly needs. Then we have all these Amazon boxes like, what did I buy? Or why did I buy it? I, I'm guilty as charged. I'm afraid to admit it. I had a tablet that was about, I don't know, maybe six years old. Yeah, basically, you know, use it occasionally. And then Amazon Prime Day came along a year ago. So I was like, you work hard. Get yourself a new tablet. 150 bucks, you know, it'll go faster than the other one. Not that the other one was slow. It's the latest and the greatest. What the heck not? I don't even use it. It's in my drawer. (laughs) Exactly. But it was attractive to you. Right price. It was like, oh, it's newer than what I have. Yep. Let me go get it. Yep. And and it's, I'm thinking bigger screen, you know, if I'm checking my email, laying in bed or whatever, I'm too lazy to open the dresser and take it out because I could just grab for one of these and (laughs) it's just as good. Um, So I got suckered in, you know, that's my own fault, if you will. Um, But then there's also that mentality where I deserve it. You know, I think a lot of us feel that way, but that goes back to exactly what you said. The, the wants versus the needs. We need to put it through. I work hard. I play hard. Yes, I deserve it. I work hard. Let me go get it. But do you really need it? Like my, 14 works just fine. We're on a 16 now. But I keep looking at the iPhone. It's like, I'm tempted, but there's nothing wrong with the one I have. Mm -hmm. It works just fine. But they give you a couple more features. 
well, it's a better camera. It's a better this. And we all are running out buying now. And I remember when phones were a couple hundred dollars. We're spending over a thousand dollars on phones. Yep. And a lot of us are leasing them. Yep. So you're renting your phone. How crazy is that? Mm. And it's all about the battery. They purposely know that you're going to get it about two years out of it. And I've even been in cell phone stores, you know, candidly talking with the uh, with the clerk. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's it. They know. It's like 2.5 years on average. Um, I only got a newer phone because my battery was, you know, getting depleted and all of that. And it seems like it's a good deal. But here is the but. Okay. They want me as a customer as long as possible. So even though they may not have given up a lot to give this phone, uh, you know, minimal price I'm paying for it. Maybe it was free, part of the package. I can't even remember. But mm -hmm. I have to be with them for another two or three years. So exactly. when they, they already figured it out. They already have me, you know? And, and if I leave, if I say, you know, I'm done with T-Mobile, I'm going to uh, AT&T. There will be repercussions at the end. <laughs> and that'll be that. Crazy. Exactly. Uh, while we're talking about elections, let's talk about om open enrollment for retirement. You have to elect to do that. Can you uh, break that down? Explain that to us. Open enrollment happens every year. Some companies, you know, we find yet again, better benefits, better cost prices for the employer and the employee. So most of us, medical, dental, vision, your standards, but then there's those extras, the health savings account, your HSA, your flex spending, your FSA, and retirement. Those are the three that become question marks. They do come with IRS limits. Do I need them? Do I not? And one of the things I tell clients, especially if they have partners, have the conversation, bring home your booklets. Nobody wants to look at it. Pull them up online. Mm. Who has the better rate? Does it make sense for me to carry the family or you to carry the family? Start to do the price comparison. If you have children, I remember when my daughter was in school, she needed braces. So I did the flex spending account. When I had the after school care back there, I could kind of guess what it would be for the summer. That was my set aside savings to pay for summer camp during the summers. Mm. Um, I am one of those people that have vision issues. I have visual assistance. I use my HSA for my glasses. Um, I don't wear my contacts as often as I used to, but that helps me offset that cost. And then you and I have talked about that 401k, planning for retirement. That's scary. Or people will just pick a number like, okay, I can do 2%, but they don't know what to do with the investments. So I tell people, look at the provider and pick up the phone. Many 401k providers through your employer will offer a financial advisor for free to help you make the right selection for you. Pick the right portfolio. Some of us are aggressive. Some of us are moderate. Our threshold for money and investing and, if you will, gambling, in a sense, we shy back. We all look at that very differently. Utilize the asset. Um, your bonuses are usually paid in March. Most corporations, you have your normal 401k and then your bonus. But what I'm learning is those that are the 150 and above K earners, they'll send the whole 401k to the retirement max off for the year. Those that make less... We're picking and choosing, or we're not doing it at all. Mm. I say, look at your age. Are you closer to retirement or not? The Roth IRA, you're paying taxes up front. Pre-tax, you're not. You can wait because you have 20, 30 years before you retire. Those are the conversations we need to be having with our financial advisors to figure out what should we be doing today. Because the thing is, we're all going to retire at some point. We're working. Are we going to have enough money set aside to where we can? It's very scary for the majority of Americans <laughs> at this point. And the sad part is we're talking about Social Security may be going away. That's that lingering political issue out there that's out there. What happens if, in fact, Social Security does go away? What is the average American going to do? Because some people are depending on that. Some people actually live off that. If that does for us that are still in the working class, what is your plan B? And most Americans don't have one because it's like, I'm planning on Social Security. That should not be your guaranteed retirement plan. I don't know a lot about it, but that's money that we paid into. And is is it true that if it goes away, that you would not see that money? It would just be gone? Or 
Is, is it really what it comes down to, essentially? That's what it's sounding like. It's going to go to the government. And like you said, some of us have been paying into this a very long time. But the thing is, people are living longer. We Baby boomers are living longer. Yeah. And there are, in my opinion, not enough of us working, paying into it. So we may just run out of money because of life expectancy. People are living until their late 70s and 80s to where they're drawing down that money. But there's not enough people working to put into it. Right. So it's kind of a catch-22 a little bit when you think about it. Um, I, I can't even fathom that money not being available after paying in for so many years. Uh, it's like, I want my money back. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or give me something. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me, well, okay. That being said, your personal opinion, uh, I forget what the age is, 62 and a half, where you can take social security at least begin to, but the difference between that age and age 70 is a huge amount of money. Spread right there. Um, what would you do if you were faced in that situation? Now, l- lurking out here, hypothetically, is Social Security potentially going away. We don't know if it's going to, but it's floating out there. Um, what would your recommendation be? And how would somebody uh, make that determination? One of the things you can go to the Social Security Administration, uh, create an account and look and see what your potential retirement will be at 62 and a half, or if you work, I want to say it's 72. But you can see each year what your potential amount will be. Yep. I, by I said, the way, I got it in the mail. because they, they Yeah, they send the projections out. And that's why it's fresh in my mind. And the again, the difference between uh, you know, 62 and, and 70 even, uh, big difference. <laughs> it is. And then what I tell people, take your last paycheck of the year and compare it to your social security statement and make sure the amounts are correct. Not that you don't want to trust your employer. I've been a payroll director, but make sure what you are paying in is actually being reported and being reported correctly. Because mm-hmm. if not, you can go back to your employers like, hey, we, we, we short over here what happened and let your employer correct it. Um, that plan B, create those savings. You can create your own IRA, hmm. but the reality is it's probably not going to be enough. Do you own a home? What does the equity look like in that home? Some people are looking at multi-properties. A lot of people are now building ADUs if they have the space to generate that additional income for themselves. Really sit down with someone and look at what are my options? What am I doing today? What are my living expenses? How can I cut that back and really start to plan and set aside? Because most people, you want to live the best life after retirement. Well, for me, I don't want to wait until retirement because what if I don't make it to retirement? I want to enjoy and travel today, but still making sure I can still live mm-hmm. and I'm still planning for my retirement at the same time. And then once I do retire, travel even some more. It, it almost seems like a very delicate balance where you want to have some money to enjoy your life and, and you know, your later pre-retirement years. But you also want to make sure that on the back end, you don't blow all that money that you have it over here. Uh, to support yourself at that time. <laughs> it's really, it's really dicey. Well, like your friend that went to Florida, a lot of people that live in these high states where state taxes are ridiculous are retiring in states where there's no state taxes. So mm-hmm. that's why you hear a lot of people are retiring in Florida. So they're working in these states, high income earners, saving up their money. Then they move to a state where the cost of living is much lower and their dollar is stretching so much further. Well, I think I shared with you uh, a colleague of mine, uh, because the prices of homes in Florida are starting to drop, uh, some of that because of hurricane concerns, insurance, uh, condos and co-ops, the insurance and the homeowners association fees are way up. He bought a house uh, about three years ago, four years ago. He just sold it and pocketed the cash of what he made off of it. He still owed on it, but he, you know, it made like 150 K and he's homeless essentially, but he calls himself because he does digital work, a digital nomad. He just right. goes wherever he wants. Guess where he is today. He's in Egypt. Oh, wow. Yeah. He found some friends that, that were a group that were going there, but here's the, here's the like, aha. Uh-huh. He's spending less per month doing this Airbnbs, you know, mm-hmm. And, and there's, you know, a little bit of travel you know, fees there, you know, airline, all of that, but he was going to do that anyway, wanted to get away. Uh, 
That's less than what he was spending when he was owning a home because also doesn't have to take care of the maintenance, the lawn and all of that. He's living the life. Doesn't have kids, not married. He's about 50. Uh, it doesn't get any better, I guess. <laughs> There's the life. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, of course, I'm in New York. When he told me what his taxes are, 3K a month, I'm like, what? The average where I am is like 12, 11. Easy. Easy. Exactly. For a basic home. I'm not, you know, nothing crazy. Yeah. Here. <laughs> like 10. Uh, it's it just, it's it's out of control. All I can say is whoever gets elected, let's hope for a positive financial change. Yes. At this point in time, we've got about uh, maybe a minute, 30 seconds left. Okay. Here it be the beginning of November. Uh, aside from the open enrollment, is there anything else that somebody should be thinking of at this time of the year? Holiday spending. You're getting ready to pay your taxes. Come January, those 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 W twos are going to be coming in the mail. Mm-hmm. If you can, you want to offset your tax bill. If you are able to make some donations, do so. Mm, good point. So you can get those tax credits in this year, so you can write them off in 2025. Great point. Didn't even think about that. I mean, I, granted, it's it's not a huge credit, but it's something. And if you can do it, why not do it in the last uh, quarter of the game, if you will. Um, Latanya, always great having you on here. I'm so glad we do video. Yeah, you know, we used to do it over the phone. This is great. Um, how do we find you? What's your website again? www.3bfinancial.co. And thank you for the reminder of the want and need filter. <laughs> it's an important one, especially with all the Black Friday sales and Prime Day and all that coming up. Yeah. We're all going to get, as I say, finger trigger happy in a couple of weeks because we're going to just get, hit enter. Say like- yes. Click crazy. Don't. (laughs) All right. Appreciate you. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world. This is the Podcast Business News Network. Adopt US Kids presents what to expect when you're expecting. A teenager learning the lingo. Today, I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying, that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying, totally, just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, rad just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council.